Keith Snedden here from Reality Based Fitness. Wanted to show you a very common position that many of us spend during the day. Does it look familiar? It's called the seated posture. Uh, a lot of people spend their, their work like this and then they go home they spend a lot more time like this. And then they often wonder why they feel so crappy all the time and have all kinds of cervical issues, upper back issues, lumbar issues, headaches. Uh, and even pain into the, into the upper extremity, which could be like numbness, tingling, like thoracic outlet syndrome type stuff. So what I want to talk about is a really important concept called micro breaks, which is pretty obvious and it would be something that you would think you would just do anyway. But we get so centered on what we're doing that we often fail to respect uh, kind of the boundaries of our tissues and the tolerance, our tissue tolerance. And studies have shown pretty definitively that if you spend more than 20 to 30 minutes in a very flexed uh, kind of suboptimal posture that you get ligamentous creep and disc issues uh, which basically is just it, it's just like a continuous sort of compression in the tissues which can have negative effects long term so if you if you stay there uh, too long you're basically setting yourself up for injury even if you just get up and then you went to try to go pick something up you're at more risk for injury. So the concept of micro breaks is really important to embrace because it allows your body to sort of get a break from the static posture. So in the case of sitting, if you set a, a, a watch or maybe an outlook or some sort of a program on your computer, for every 20 to 30 minutes, I wouldn't go more than 30 minutes where you know that you're going to be down uh, in this type of a, a posture where you're going to get up, literally you're going to stand up, you're going to do something completely different. So this right here is called the Bruger Relief Position, which comes from a European kind of pain researcher and sort of a movement specialist. And this, this motion of the external rotation, depression of the scapula, and just uh, squeezing them in the opposite direction of, of here, which is protraction and internal rotation, even if you did that for a few breaths, three to five breaths, you could put your arms straight up in the air trying to make yourself tall, trying to literally take your rib cage off of your pelvis. You could also send your arms out. If you cannot stand up for, for whatever reason, if you perch yourself to the edge of your chair, spread your legs a little bit wider than your normal width, turn them out slightly, sternum is up. Think of a, of a string stuck to a helium balloon. It's going to pick your chest up. You can do the same thing this way, and your goal in all of these would actually be to also try to perform a diaphragmatic breath. So see if you can get out of breathing in your chest and actually fill up your lower abdomen, your rib cage, not just uh, this way into the belly, but also see if you can go horizontally or breathing like a balloon. So if I'm in this uh, posture right here, I could take three to five breaths. Preferably through the nose rather than the mouth. Uh, and that's just a very simple thing that you could do throughout the day. If there was a stretch that, that, that you needed to do, you could get against a wall and perform some, some type of a, I don't quite have enough space here, but some type of a wall slide activity. There's a lot of things you could do if you needed to do uh, you know, a, a, a quad stretch, it could be a hamstring stretch, some sort of corrective drill. That would be a really good thing to throw in every 20 to 30 minutes if you can do it when you're in this type of a sort of seated environment. I hope that tip helps. Uh, this is Keith Snyder. Thank you.